Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about kinds of preppers that are probably going to get themselves killed. And I don't really know why I'm doing this video, because I think it's just going to make people mad. But keep in mind, while there are some people who will fit squarely into one of these categories that we're going to talk about, a lot of these are behaviors that we might fall into at one point or another during our preparedness journey. And they really are just sort of sins of focusing on one area of preparedness to the point where you don't really do anything with the other areas. It's lopsided preparedness in a lot of the cases. Not all of them, but in a lot. And the first prepper that's probably going to get themselves killed is the no-action prepper. These are folks who sit around watching YouTube videos like this one. Maybe they read some prepper or survival books but they never get around to actually doing the things that will help them be more prepared. So they never practice skills, they never set aside food or water, and there could be a lot of reasons for that. The first one, and probably most obvious, being lack of money. They think that because they can't go and spend a whole lot of money on prepping, like a lot of folks do, that they might as well, I mean, they just kind of give up. They think because they can't be prepared for the big stuff that, you know, they're just not going to, be ready for anything. They're not even going to prepare for the small stuff either. So if that's you, I mean, I challenge you, if you can't spend $100 this month, can you spend 10 Can you spend 20 That would probably be enough to get you at least some dried beans, some dried rice, maybe some peanut butter, things like that that are shelf-stable that are, I mean, very kind of high-impact, low-cost foods. Or it could just be they haven't decided that prepping is necessary, and if that is you, I would encourage you to open your eyes and see all the craziness that's going on now. And the next kind of prepper that's probably going to get themselves killed, and this is a fun one, is the gun nut prepper. And these folks spend most of their preparedness budget on ammo and firearms, and that's pretty much it, except for maybe some cleaning supplies. And before you get mad and click off the video, that is the kind of prepper that... I used to be before a few things happened that made me realize that I need to store more than just those two things. And in reality, I at that point was more of a gun collector than I was anything else. And the reason why folks veer this way, I think sometimes, is that quite frankly, guns are more exciting than a lot of the other areas of preparedness. I mean, you, you you store food and it's just sitting there. You might eat it as you rotate through it, but I mean, it's not going to really do much until then. I mean, but guns, you can use them for hunting, you can target shoot with them, you can spend an afternoon with your friends. So, I mean, they are appealing in that way. I, I completely get that because, well, I've done all of those things, but just got to kind of move beyond that and be a little bit more wounded, well-rounded, even though, of course, defense is incredibly important. I don't want to discount that. Well, yes, you do need those things. They shouldn't be the, uh, like the only focus of your preparedness. And kind of a dark version of the gun nut prepper are the ones who think that when something happens, they're just going to go around and steal from everybody and hurt folks and do this, that, and the other. I'm not going to call them by their cool names because they don't deserve to be called by cool names. There's been a lot of talk of them within the past couple months or so, and I'm not going to um, legitimize them by giving them a cool, scary-sounding nickname or any nonsense like that because, anyway, moving on. But the important thing to remember if you are suffering from that thought process is that you might win a few, okay? You might kind of get the jump on some people, get you some supplies for a little while, but eventually though, those sort of shenanigans are going to catch up with you. Um, one thing to remember is a lot of people, even if they don't necessarily like each other and they might be at odds with one another, if a greater threat emerges that is threatening them both, they're likely to band together. I mean, the U.S. and the Soviets weren't exactly best friends in World War II. And stuff, you know, those kind of alliances can happen on a smaller scale as well. So it is important to remember that. But then on the other side of the spectrum is going to be the pacifist prepper. These are peace-loving. <coughs> sorry, they don't believe in self-defense. 
think they can talk their way out of everything. There's always a diplomatic solution. And it's important not to be 100% that way either because there's bad folks out there that are going to do bad things and words do not stop them. And you need to have the resolve, the ability, and the tools needed to defend yourself and your loved ones if some, you know, if somebody like that does come your way. So, I mean, while you don't want to be the, you know, the, the aggressive person who goes out and steals stuff, you also don't want to be the, the, the pacifist either. Then kind of related to the gun nut prepper, another kind of prepper that's probably going to get themselves killed is the Geardo. Kind of like gear and weirdo put together, the Geardo. But instead of guns, even though they probably have quite a bit of guns, these folks spend a disproportionate amount on things like knives, backpacks, and other items that they may or may not have any practical use for. For example, if you have a BK-16, an SE-4, SE-5, BK-7, and a whole big pile of Ontarios and a bunch of Benchmade, this, that, and the other, and you have like four cans of spaghetti sauce in your uh, in your pantry, and that's your food storage, you need to quit buying all that extra stuff that, quite frankly, you already have those bases covered extremely well and focus on some bases that you don't have covered as well. Now, that's not to say that, I mean, if you have an interest towards some things, like, I mean, I... I kind of got a knife collection and you know I'll usually pick up you know another one around Christmas time and stuff like that but I have learned that that should not be the bulk of my preparedness efforts and you know it could be other types of gear as well just whatever you're interested in that's kind of what you tend to gravitate towards and spend more money on but sometimes you might have so much gear that there's no way that you could practice with all of it. Um, you have more stuff than what you and your family could realistically be expect to effectively use during an emergency. And, you know, you focus on this so much that, like I said a second ago, your food and your water is miserably lacking. Then the next kind of prepper that's probably going to get themselves killed is the lone wolf. These are folks that plan to survive either completely by themselves or only with members of their immediate family. And while, yes, there are many situations that would require a level of isolation and operational security, keeping your mouth shut, not um, betraying what you have to, you know, to too many people, you have to remember that things like security, they require multiple people working in multiple shifts in order to be effective. So individuals in very small groups, you're not really going to be able to do that. Also, if you were one person or you're like a family of like four people, even if your kids might be older and they might be able to help with things like security, you also have to remember that in a small group like that, the pool of skills that you have is likely to be very shallow. In today's age of over-specialization, a lot of people really are good at one thing, and they might be marginally good at others, but it's going to require a group of more than probably just five people to be able to fill all the gaps and skills that you will need. Now, given there might be some odd jacks-of-all-trades out there, maybe you're one of them, but in general, it's going to be a good idea to have some more people around so that they can help with security. They have more experiences in different types of areas that you would need to do work in. And then also having more bodies around to do manual labor would be useful. Of course, you have to think about how are you going to feed those people, you know, water, how are you going to deal with conflicts inside the group, things like that. But surviving by yourself is sustainable for probably a, a relatively short period of time. So the next kind of prepper is the Red Dawn prepper. They dream of the day that they get to bug out and live off of the land. They think that every single 
thing that goes wrong is going to result in something where they're heading to the woods trying to evade everybody or maybe they're even going out to their bug out retreat and i mean if you have a fully stocked up bug out retreat then of course that's great but just heading out to the hills heading into the wilderness that's not going to be doable for a, a lot of people now some people maybe yes but for the vast majority of people the whole red dawn daydream scenario probably isn't the way to go then on the flip side are the folks with no escape plan they insist on staying put and i know that there's a lot of folks that have a very good reason for this and a lot of them revolve around their health maybe they're older they don't have somebody to um, take them where they would need to go if they needed to bug out because i mean I, I know the demographics of this channel you know i know that there's a lot of older folks out there who you know their y'all aren't as maybe as a good health as you used to be your kids might live far from you so they wouldn't be able to help if something were to just happen you know if the ball just drops they might not be able to get to you in time so i mean if if that's you i would encourage you to try to get creative try to talk to some like-minded people out there that maybe you could join up with especially if you have knowledge or skills in a useful area uh, because while you want to maintain your operational security i think it's important to kind of poke around and figure out who out there thinks like we do because it would probably surprise you how many people there are out there that think the way that we do that might be potential allies and there might be situations where you absolutely do have to get out probably the for me the first one that comes to mind is a wildfire you're not bugging in for a wildfire and there are other situations as well um cat five hurricanes you're not going to want to bug in for that if it's going to make landfall right where you're at so even if it's just a friend from church or a friend from maybe um, like a club that you go to once a week, once a month, have a way to at least get in a car and get to safety. And then the next one is the freeze-dried bucket king. And this is kind of a caricature, but this is somebody who just nearly focuses nearly all of their efforts on food kits. They don't focus a lot on other areas of preparedness like defense they plan to rely solely on their stored preps to help keep them alive they don't really have skills in growing food raising livestock and raising livestock is a, is a deficiency of mine but i am working on my gardening and there are people around me who do know more about the livestock side of things um, also no wilderness survival skills basically these are folks that they buy one of those like maybe like four bucket kits and then they think that they're set or they buy a pre-made bug out bag and then think that that's it they don't really go any deeper into more self-sufficiency and things that will keep you alive during a long-term situation so that's another kind of prepper that'll get killed and then finally that me leads me to the last one and that is the fatalist prepper these are folks that say, if this happens, I don't want to live, or if this happens, I'm dead. And my challenge to those people would be, if you have already thought of something happening as a possibility, maybe try to think of creative ways to not die. I mean, we are the smartest creatures on this planet. We have problem-solving skills, so, I mean, do research try to figure it out. I mean, I'm stubborn. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna probably just lie down and, you know, and that's kind of what we talked about in the last video was just will to live, that sort of stuff. And if you missed that video, click on the card. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again.